when you consider even the cost of going to coding boot camp, not only the financial cost, but the toll it has on your mental health, mental stability, your own self and the people around you, that's a big cost. So let's make sure we are doing everything we can to make sure all is tip top shape to go. Hello everybody. My name is Nyan. I'm the black female engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today we are talking about how to make it through coding bootcamp. Let this serve you as your coding bootcamp survival guide of 2022 and i know we haven't passed the january threshold just yet but it is november which means it's thanksgiving which means it's christmas which means it's new year's which means it's february so let's get right and so if you haven't watched my coding bootcamp survival guide of about a year ish nine months ago i highly recommend you check that out after this i'm trying not to repeat myself and really provide new insights uh with a whole new mindset a whole new perspective and so so when talking how to make it through all like all this that you're in right now we need to look at okay where are students to meet students because you're learning something so where are students most likely to kind of drop off so I went to coding bootcamp June of 2020, June of 2020 to October of 2020 and through my experience there I saw three main places and so one, I would say students have the largest risk of, yeah, not making it through after coding challenges. So coding challenges was something my specific bootcamp had. And I imagine many do because they're basically ways to test how much you've learned and retained uh, over these last X amount of weeks. I went to Flatiron School and for me, this happened every three weeks. And so every three weeks you had this like week where you were just trying to make it through and solve the coding challenge. It was basically kind of a mix between a mini project and an exam, kind of a mix between the two, more mini project than exam, but the mindset is kind of like, yeah, it's a, it's a test. And so coding challenges really being, yeah, the biggest risk then the second being projects and project weeks those were also every three weeks they were the week after coding challenges and so if your project was not up to par with the standards that they have set then you could also be left behind and then finally just the regular day-to-day -day learning and the student dropping off because they can't keep up with either the material or they can't retain that information um as fast as other people and whatnot because we can't is quick and so if you can't you know go quickly it's, it's very hard to catch back up so how do we address these things how do we survive these things so we'll start with the coding challenges section let me say this advice is specifically based off my experience at flatiron and with coding challenges we didn't just have one test and then if you pass you pass and then boom or and if you failed you were kicked out you had about four tries to pass and so you do it on monday if you fail then you do it tuesday you fail you do it wednesday you fail you do it thursday and if you fail thursday that's when you're like okay uh goodbye now the reason that's important is because my number one tip for getting past for surviving coding challenges is to treat that first try not as a coding challenge at all treat that first try as a mechanism for just showing you which topics you may need to be better acquainted with and more comfortable with. If you employ that mentality in your first attempt at coding challenges, then coding challenges are a lot less stressful because here is what I recommend. Walk up in there, right? <laughs> We're virtual, but walk up in there into, you know, onto your desk, pull up the coding challenge and just read it, read it all the way through, understand what is being asked of you, take notes as to, okay, what specifically is being asked that I do? What specific topics is it honing in on? Is it honing in on iterative statements? Is it honing in on understanding um, JSON, or the use of dictionaries or objects? Um, depending on the language you're using. And so what is it really honing in on? What topic is this specifically relating to? Take all of those notes and then try your best to just see where you can go with it. Again, have the mindset of my goal isn't to pass. My goal is to see 
where maybe my blind spots are and so try to see how far you can go and the second you hit a roadblock note it note it down try to figure out why exactly you hit that roadblock is it because you don't know where to go next after doing a specific step is it because you don't know why you do the specific step note all of those things and just keep on going and if you can't surpass that roadblock then go back to reading the code challenge what is asked from you and everything and try to make a mental note of like okay this even if I did get past this roadblock, I think I would have issues with this, and then this, 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 this. And then boom, we always had about three hours to complete the code challenge, two to two to four, maybe three and a half, maybe it was three and a half. But then boom, your time is up. It goes way faster than you think. <laughs> your time is up, and then now you can spend the rest of your day addressing those problem areas you had. Now you know exactly what you are struggling with. You know exactly what your where your blinders are, where you stumble. And so spend the rest of the day going through that line by line, practice like crazy, build and burn and build. If you don't know what I mean by build and burn, go back to that first coding bootcamp survival guide. But yes, build and burn and build and burn and continue that over and over until you just can't get it wrong. Do that for the entire day seriously do it for the entire day and then boom your second try i bet you you'll go a lot further than you did your first and then boom you finished it in two tries you didn't even need to go to the third or fourth even if you do go to the third or fourth make sure in the previous attempts you're doing this exact same thing make sure you're noting exactly where you are getting stuck what roadblock you're on and once the coding challenge stops reach out to people reach out to instructors reach out to peers go to the additional resources provided by your boot camp and ask you don't have to say how do i solve problem three of the coding challenge because i'm pretty sure that's not a lot but you can just say hey how do i map through objects in javascript then that's like a, a legit uh topic and a legit skill that you need enhancing and so then of course like okay yeah let's schedule a zoom call let's do some pair programming um let's do like another session of teaching and everything and we can go through this i know it can be hard to reach out to people but you gotta 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 because on the job you'll be reaching out to people the amount of people i've reached out to in the last like 24 hours is absurd so all around you're learning on to number two the second area the second part the second reason people can drop off is because they did not meet requirements for or expectations for their projects this again happened about every three weeks and so when you get to that project section make sure that before you start your project you reach out to your instructors to your teachers and say hey this is my idea these are the features it would have and the, like the way i would code it out would it meet your standards for passing boom a lot of times i have seen a lot of things can be simplified and avoided simply by having asked a question just one question and so no reach out to your instructors like y'all nobody here wants you to fail at all at all and so when you consider even the cost of going to coding boot camp not only the financial cost but the toll it has on your mental health mental stability your own self and the people around you that's a big cost so let's make sure we are doing everything we can to make sure all is good top tip top shape to go and one of those is asking questions and asking the right questions and that is a question i want y'all to ask every single time it's time to develop a project and then boom you know exactly what to do to pass through that project phase second tip i have for you all in surviving projects week is making sure you have your mvp down now what's an mvp an mvp stands for minimally viable product and so what is the least amount of things I need to put in this project in order to pass, in order for the app to be functioning and in order for it to pass. Here is like an example. I remember my instructor shared this example actually. Uh, I'm going to butcher it, so don't quote me. But basically it was the idea of Instacart. Instacart is a grocery delivery app and whatnot. And I guess in the very beginning stages, it, it really was just kind of more text messaging of, 
okay, you send this like large text to a community of shoppers and say all the things you need and which store you want. And then they would do that and deliver it to your home. Not this whole huge interface of like, okay, I want strawberries and then quantity too. And then going to shopping cart and putting my credit card, like all these, you know, features and these bells and whistles everywhere that we see now. But in essence, that's what it was in the very beginning stage. And it worked. And that's what an MVP is. So think about what the MVP for your app is and make that your goal of just, okay, for these next X amount of days, I'm just going to focus on the MVP. And then once you get past the MVP, then focus on making it this bells and whistles thing and making the user interface gorgeous and having these, you know, sound effects and everything. That's where you can focus on that because if you have sound effects, that's great. But if the app doesn't load, that's an issue. And so make sure you're not wasting your time. Because again, what we're trying to do is simply this, this whole video is simply getting you to that finish line. And so to get to that finish line, all you need is the minimum, the minimum. So figure out what that minimum is. And again, this could be something that you actually reach out to your um, instructors about and ask, okay, this is what I think is the minimally viable product. What do you think? And there are times when I had those meetings with instructors and they'd be like, oh, actually that's not even minimally viable. If you take out these two features, then it's actually minimally viable. So make sure you focus on this bare minimum first and then start adding on those features. Because what I don't want to see is you all get the go ahead for a specific app and that that's enough for you to pass. But then because you're focusing on all of these bells and whistles, you never actually finished the project. And now you don't pass that stage. And a bonus tip, make sure you're also not wasting time by thinking about creating the most lavish, big, grand app like it's not that deep <laughs> um you don't need to make the new stock market app the new robin hood the new like airplane monitor or whatever you don't need to do any of that think of like you can i'm not saying don't i'm not saying don't like definitely do like what your heart desires but what i'm saying is don't stress yourself out thinking you have to have this most lavish app instead Think of just like a basic thing, like let's say a to-do list and figure out the MVP. And then if you have time, then start thinking about what features you can add onto the to-do list that would make it this, you know, more lavish thing. And so let's say after you, uh, complete one item off the list, then it tracks how many, like, let's say cookie points you have. And by the time you have five cookie points, then you can treat yourself in some way for accomplishing things on your to-do list. Just like, for example, yeah, a feature you could add. And so now it's becoming from, it's, it's going from this one basic thing, which, which, you know, basic, I don't know, C's get degrees. I'm, I'm just saying, but yes, if you do have the time, then you can start thinking about those bells and whistles um, to make it more impressive. So think less about what app you can create that would be impressive and think more, what features can I add to the super basic app that would make it um, like maybe different or you know impressive and whatnot, if, if you have the time. And then finally, the last, you know, the third spot where trouble can occur is in the simple learning and just feeling like you can't retain or like feeling that you are not retaining the information or at least not as quickly as you need to to keep up pace some things to do on that one pair program seriously i'm depending on the boot camp you're in or the campus you're in it may feel like you're in this like hunger games world where you can't show any weakness and you can't make like let up and have to always look like you have everything down like that's not gonna go too well for you. I'll tell you that right now. And so instead book times and sessions where you can pair program with other people, make it recurring where it's like, okay, once a week, we as a group get together and we pair program or every other day at this specific hour, me and this person pair program and we switch places and whatnot. If you don't know really how to pair program or how to pair program effectively, check out this video above. I do a whole, you know, rundown on all of it, but yes, pair program, it can be such an amazing way to learn, but also not only just learn but learn quickly because now you have two brains uh working and that can be a fantastic and magical thing and so one pair program and two just like the coding challenge keep track of what things you're struggling on so that at the end of the day you can go specifically to those things and you're not wasting your time on subjects and processes and 
all of these things that you're actually good on. It can be, that's something I struggle with is when I'm struggling with something, instead of like studying the thing I'm struggling with, I'm like doing the things I'm good at, which gets me nowhere. And so when you write down like during the class, like, okay, so when once the instructor started talking about X, Y, and Z, I really just couldn't follow along. When you write that down, you know exactly what you need to tackle on your own or reaching out to the instructor or reaching out to your um, classmates, your cohort mates and saying, okay, it's so like, let's figure this out because yeah we only have a couple of weeks and then you know i find out if i get the boot or not and so make sure you're keeping track of that so definitely keep some type of developer journal and record your everyday experiences every day because like i said in a day the amount of things you learn is equivalent to weeks and weeks and weeks if you're doing it on your own or even in college so make sure you're keeping track of those things and so there we go everybody my coding bootcamp survival guide of 2020 too. And so again, make sure you check out the previous Coding Bootcamp Survival Guide because I try my best not to repeat myself. And so there are some very, very, very good, good tips in there that um, I think will help you out a lot as well. But please also don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to like. I really appreciate the support. It helps me out. It helps my channel a ton. And you liking and subscribing helps my videos reach more people who also would like assistance and help and are also trying to do this amazing thing of switching careers in a very short amount of time. And so please help me and help them as well. So thank you so, so, so much. And yeah, I will talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.